Cedar Point in 2019 through 2021 introduced two attractions that were to be their best themed yet, Forbidden Frontier on Adventure Island and Snake River Expedition. Both attractions were the best attempts at theming done at Cedar Point since disaster transport in the 90s. Unfortunately, as of today, both attractions have closed for good. Forbidden Frontier opened in 2019, closed for 2020, and ran in 2021 and 2022. Snake River Expedition was originally intended to open in 2020, but was delayed due to the pandemic, opening in 2021 and running until 2023. Both attractions operated for only three years. This video will serve as a deep dive into what both attractions were and why this closure is significant. We will start by describing what these two attractions were since few guests actually got to experience them. Forbidden Frontier was inspired by the attraction Ghost Town Alive at Knott's Berry Farm, brought to life both by Cedar Fair's in-house team and the Weber-themed entertainment group. The attraction would be unlike any other found at parks on the East Coast. Forbidden Frontier was designed as an adventure island, one filled with two feuding clans, the Cayuga and the Wapi. The Cayuga wanted to preserve the island's natural beauty, while the Wapi wished to modernize the island and bring it into the present day. You were visiting on Truce Day, the day both clans agreed to stop hostilities and determine the future of the island. You could find buildings inhabited by characters from each clan throughout the island. Each of these buildings were also extremely well themed, and by talking to each character you could receive tasks to complete for them that would help advance the story for the day. You could also be given a completely unscripted task that truly made every day different. Forbidden Frontier was like a real-life video game. The roleplay combined with the large playground structure, space for relaxation, a small restaurant, and the nicest bathrooms on Cedar Point property made Forbidden Frontier a hit in 2019, and the storyline would be updated and changed for each of the attraction's remaining years. But the attraction was not perfect. The first problem people were having was that it was hard to start interacting with the characters, as people did not know what to say or how to get involved. This was solved the attractions next year, in 2021, by giving guests a small pocketbook that they could use to find tasks and keep track of the ones that they had already completed. Guests would also receive buckaroos for this work, which they could use to support their preferred clan. Again, this was free to anyone who visited the park. In 2022, this was changed to stickers and a leaderboard near the entrance of the island. But the largest problem with Forbidden Frontier, and the one that would ultimately be blamed for its downfall, was its location. Located on Adventure Island in the middle of the park, but only accessible by a small path on Frontier Trail, and only visible to those who strayed to the side of the path. Not to mention, the visitors had quite the walk after entering, having to walk through several more dead areas that were formerly part of Shoot the Rapids, before getting to the island itself. This gave the attraction a very isolated feeling, which was great when you were actually on the island, but it meant guests had trouble getting there, or knowing that it existed at all. This was attempted to be remedied in 2021 and 2022 by adding more signage as well as an announcement on Frontier Trail, but unfortunately it was not enough. Many people never experienced Forbidden Frontier because they did not know that it existed or what it was. This combined with the large amount of staff needed to operate it meant unfortunately the final truce day was held in August 2022. On that day, a wedding was held between the leaders of the two clans finally ending the story that had started years prior. Cedar Point announced that a ride like the old paddle wheel excursions would be returning as part of the 150th anniversary celebration in 2020. This would later be delayed due to the pandemic, but would open in 2021 as Snake River Expedition. The ride, like Forbidden Frontier, was designed partially in-house with help from the Weber theming group. It would be Cedar Point's most themed ride yet, being a boat ride around the river that surrounded Adventure Island. It would interact heavily with Forbidden Frontier, and Forbidden Frontier would interact with it. Riders would start by entering a highly themed queue building that played a soundtrack from the famous IMA score. I love this building, it's so pretty. I know, it's like, how is this at Cedar Point? Just getting this for my own historical records. They're good. At the end of the queue, riders would be grouped by a ride operator. Once ready, a live actor would come from around the corner and usher riders into a pre-show building. 
Prior to entering this room, riders were told that they would be doing a river tour of the scenic Snake River. Inside this room, it was revealed that riders would be helping to smuggle gold up Snake River and that they should be wary of several dangers such as outlaws and the giant river snake, the Basilisk. Two riders from the group were then handed bags and the group of riders proceeded outside onto a waiting boat. In the original version of the ride, the boat would be staffed by a ride operator who drove the boat and a member of Live Entertainment who would be the rider's real guide. After the boat set off, the actor would take one of the bags, claiming the red label on the bag to mean that it's dynamite and not gold. The actor would put this in a box on board and continue with the story. The boat would pass several animatronics as well as several theming pieces shared with Forbidden Frontier. All of these would be mentioned by the boat's skipper. About halfway through the ride, the boat would stop at the outlaw town of Seville. Here, a live actor would hijack the boat, boarding, threatening the riders, then taking the bag of gold from the riders' hands. The hijacker then left the boat and the boat would be shot at by animatronics inside some of the buildings of Seville. Once the riders escaped Seville, their skipper would be anxious about what would happen if Trapper Dan, the owner of Snake River Expedition Tours, found out about the lost gold. As the skit played out, riders would pass the cavalry post and told that Etta Fox's team must be after the outlaws. Etta Fox was the main character on Forbidden Frontier. In the next scene, it would be revealed that the bag of supposed dynamite was actually gold, and the hijacker had a bag of dynamite. The boat would then slow down as a member of Etta Fox's cavalry appeared on a hill to the left of them as an outlaw with the bag of dynamite walked up on the right side of the boat, with a standoff occurring with the riders in the middle. The outlaw would then enter an outhouse with the bag of dynamite, and the boat skipper would yell to the cavalry commander that the outlaw had the dynamite. The cavalry commander would then fire their revolver at the outhouse, causing it to explode. Riders would then return to the loading dock while being told somewhat awkward jokes, as well as encountering the giant snake, the Basilisk, before disembarking. The attraction would play into the theme of Forbidden Frontier, and Forbidden Frontier would play into the theme of it, with several tasks on the island involving spotting hidden words on the side of the Snake River expedition boats that face the island, and were only visible from the island. In 2021, members of the winning clan on Forbidden Frontier for the day would receive Skip the Line passes for Snake River Expedition, meaning riders could have a full day of themed, interactive live entertainment at a park claimed by some to be a concrete jungle. Much like Forbidden Frontier, Snake River Expedition was not without its problems. The attraction featured four boats, each seating 24 riders. With the long ride duration of around 15 minutes, this meant that there was a very low overall capacity coming to an average of probably around 350 riders per hour. Adding more boats was also not an option, as the boats would get too close to each other on the ride layout and it would impact the story. The theming created by the Weber Group had some issues in the elements, with parts of it starting to break down, and the boats themselves were unreliable, with it being a constant fight to keep all four boats running. By its final season, the ride rarely ran with four boats at all. In fact, the ride saw a lot of changes in its final season. For 2023, all live entertainment actors were removed from the ride, with the ride operators left to tell some semblance of a story. The soundtrack was modified, with the IMAScore tracks only being used on the ride itself and in the queue house, with the tracks in the exit and pre-show being changed to ones created in-house. This came along with a storyline change. Now the outlaws were gone, being driven off after last year's activities. Hello and welcome to Snake River. Home of amazing wildlife, natural wonders, and quality river tours. Ever since Trapper Dan fled these parts with his bandits, I, Henry Bellman, saw the opportunity in this beautiful territory. Now that Snake River properties are on the market, I need to make Trapper Dan's loss into your game. Now the ride took you on a real estate tour of the Snake River. The themed buildings around the attraction were now real estate for sale, and the ride operator would drive through and encourage riders to invest while telling corny jokes. Right, you have a chance to buy some land here on the historic Snake River. So who is ready to go property hunting? The entire onboard entertainment was now performed by the ride operator who also had to drive the boat. Anyone who had been on the ride in previous years was confused by these changes, and most people could probably see the writing on the wall. And it remains to be seen what will happen to this beloved but flawed attraction. Ultimately, Forbidden Frontier and Snake River Expedition were fantastic ideas that had some small problems with their execution. 
With Forbidden Frontier suffering from its isolated location and lack of advertising, and Snake River Expedition suffering from low capacity, somewhat bad execution, especially as the attraction aged, and lack of advertising. Both attractions were also huge labor sinks due to the amount of ride operations and live entertainment personnel they required relative to the amount of people that enjoyed them. Let's do some quick napkin math, but keep in mind that none of these numbers are official and they're really just observations by a fan of the attraction. Snake River Expedition running at full capacity in its original form required 7 ride operators and 8 members of live entertainment. Let's say that the park is open for 10 hours and every employee is paid the $20 an hour Cedar Point advertised in 2021. Let's also say that the ride in 10 hours got 3,000 riders. This gives the ride a cost to operate of roughly $1 per guest. Keep in mind that this does not include maintenance costs and that the attraction was free for all guests. For some comparison, let's look at a roller coaster. Magnum XL200 right next to Snake River Expedition needs 11 employees to run at its maximum capacity and it can easily get over 12,000 riders in that same 10 hour time period. This leads to a cost per rider of roughly 18 cents per rider. This calculation is a great way to explain part of why these attractions failed. And again, none of those numbers are official and I could be way off. For me, it is a little sad that these attractions failed as both were a step in a different direction for Cedar Fair. They were unique experiences that could not be found anywhere else. Attractions that were designed to diversify the park to make it appeal more to those not interested in roller coasters. I personally loved both of these attractions, and I would love to see something like Forbidden Frontier return to an area like Frontier Trail and see a new boat ride replace Snake River Expedition sometime in the future, hopefully with lessons learned from these two failures. Cedar Point has been moving to make the park into more of a resort destination than just an amusement park for the last two decades or so, and the market these attractions were going after really does exist. This can be seen industry-wide with the focus on rides that everyone can enjoy. I personally loved both of these attractions, with one of my best days ever at Cedar Point being a day I spent on Forbidden Frontier and bouncing back and forth between Snake River Expedition ending with the Celebrate 150 Parade and the Celebrate 150 Spectacular Show, all without riding a single roller coaster. So I personally do hope to see another attempt on these attractions in the future. In all fairness, the park does still have plenty of attractions that appeal to everyone, such as the world-class live entertainment and the beach, as well as special events. But further diversifying Cedar Point is the right idea in my opinion. While unfortunately Forbidden Frontier and Snake River Expedition did not succeed, I personally believe this isn't the end of attractions like these at Cedar Point. What did you think of these two attractions? Did you get the chance to experience them while they were at Cedar Point? Thanks for listening to this long-winded video about these two attractions that I personally really enjoyed. I know it's different than what I usually cover, but hopefully, if you've never experienced these attractions, you now have at least some idea of what they were like and why they closed. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. If you're in the market for some real estate, I know a piece of dirt where you want to stake your claim. If you don't mind the bears and bugs and ornery raccoons, there's no doubt this bottom land is tailor-made for you. You're gonna love Snake River, friend, that is for sure. With wild and woolly critters camped outside your door. Once you tie up to your dock, you'll never want to roam. So pack your bags and move on in. Oh, Snake